Hey, comic book fans, my nerdy friends, my geeky compadres, what's going on? <clears throat> well, back at you uh, with another Halloween-themed back issue review. Uh, this time we're going to do House of Mystery, issue 308, uh, featuring I, Vampire. Um, first things first, I want to just mention this Joe Kubert cover. Uh, it's just awesome. I love that cover. Super cool. Um, yeah. So, we'll get into this one. I'll read the first part and I'll get back with you, alright? Okay, uh, so first things first, this one was really pretty long. I guess because it's um, it says I, Vampire, is starring in the House of Mystery. Um, it's going to focus mostly on him. Uh, Should have realized that, but didn't. Um, the I, Vampire story was written by Bruce Jones, and Tom Sutton was the artist. Uh, it was slightly confusing, i got to be honest. Um, there's a lot of time travel, and I, I got a bit confused a little bit. Um, so, it first takes place uh, in 1964, um, in coastal Maine, and it starts off with, uh, saying, I'll just read it, uh, 400 years ago, my vampiric kiss transformed the woman I loved into the soulless thing called Mary, Queen of Blood. Today she seeks undead domination of the planet, while I seek to stop her before it is too late. So, um, it's pretty much about um, Andrew Bennett, who is I, Vampire. Uh, him trying to go back in time to stop uh, Mary, Queen of Blood, becoming Mary, Queen of Blood, um, I think. I don't know, um... It starts with this right here, that page uh, of a ring sinking down into um, the bottom of the ocean with a submerged um, submarine, Nazi submarine. And uh, apparently this ring is uh, the, the ring of Curlet. Um It can transport people throughout time. Um, and it's singing into the ocean uh, through the wrecked hull of a World War II U-boat, where it finally comes to rest, not on the ocean floor, but on the skeletal finger of a long-drowned seaman. Right there. Uh, so, um, then it go. It cuts. Th this is where it got confusing, kind of. <laughs> the second page is where it got confusing. Um, it cuts to Andrew Bennett standing on a cliff with this girl named Dee Dee. Um, and then I... I don't really understand... Oh! I still don't understand. Yeah, I'm mostly just confused about it. Like, I want to... So this whole scene here that takes part on the cliff um, and the ring, like what happened with the ring, um, I don't really get. I think Mary, Queen of Blood, took Dee Dee and tried to use her to get the ring of Carolette. Um, in the end, the ring sinks down and Andrew Bennett, High Vampire, uh goes down to to get it um while he's down there well he they pretty much get a boat from Dee Dee's friend 
eye vampire jumps into the water uh, without equipment uh, to go get the ring. Um, he goes to get it and ends up having like this underwater battle with all these Nazi skeletons, uh, which is really cool. Um, it was really neat how it played out. Um, in the end, um, the captain of the U-boat, who has the ring on his finger, which brought everybody, brought all the skeletons pretty much, I would say back to life, but really just reanimated the dead bodies. Um, he gets up into the boat uh, with Dee Dee and the captain. And you see right there, he's got Dee Dee. Um, it was going to kill them. And Andrew Bennett comes and beats the skeleton up and takes the ring. Uses the ring to go back in time to when Mary, before she became Mary, Queen of Blood, uh, is there. And they're going to have their engagement party where her father is going to announce them to be engaged. Um, you see them kind of right there. He's kind of just like, he's lovelorn, so he's just kind of overtaken with emotion for her, um, and doesn't notice that Mary, Queen of Blood, down there in the bottom corner, uh, is on looking and kind of plotting. Um, so Andrew Bennett and Mary, regular Mary, uh, talk and uh they're they're kissing and <clears throat> the Andrew Bennett from the past comes up and Andrew Bennett who came back to the past rushes Mary back into the house he says okay I'll meet you at the party later love you bye and uses his vampire abilities to knock past tense Andrew Bennett off his horse and hits his head and gives him like a concussion. You can see that there. And there's him using his his powers. And there's past Andrew Bennett falling off his horse and hitting his head. Um, Andrew Bennett from the future um, grabs Andrew Bennett from the past, hides him in his bar in a in this barn, uh, so he can't kill himself or he can't die, so he won't die. Um, and as he's doing that, as he's putting past Andrew Bennett in the barn, he comes upon um, a witch hunt. There's a lot that went on in this book. Uh, he comes upon a witch hunt, and um, he feels the need to save this girl that they're going to... Um, before they put her in the dunking stool in the pond um because that's what they did when they hunted witches you know um he tells the people that you know he's gonna oversee this on one condition that they listen to his judgment which means i'm pretty sure he's just gonna say that she's not a witch and to let her go um but as all this is going on mary queen of blood is watching and decides that this is her time to make her move so you can see her transformation there i thought that was really cool uh you can see the bat here in the moon so i'm guessing that was her and then she's coming down as a bat and turning into herself um oh that was really neat then um we cut back to the house where regular mary is getting um ready for the party and she's calling on her I would say slave, but I think it's just maiden, uh, to come to her hair and, uh, Annabelle, but Mary Queen of Blood is dressed up as Annabelle, Annabelle and hits her over the head. And then we end on this frame right here. Um, and that's it. It says to be continued in the next issue. So unfortunately I don't have a full story to tell you that that was it. It was rather confusing. Um, pretty in depth, uh, not very scary but very cool um i really want to get i re really really want to get the next issue uh so i can see what happens next 
but uh yeah that was it so that's the first part <laughs> i got it looks like i got one more so uh we'll get on to that okay so the second story was called chip off the old block uh it's written by joey Calaver cavallari uh and artists are mark texera and john salardo um Pretty much, uh, we start off with this kid Eddie and his dad um, working in the in a cemetery. Um, Eddie's dad is carving up and explaining what you know how to actually do a a good rock carving, like uh, how the legs balance and how the arms are posed, and uh, he's telling Eddie that he's going to have to pay close attention because this is what he's going to do with the rest of his life. And Eddie says he doesn't want to do it. Um, he wants to make his own way in the world. And um, uh, Eddie's friends come up. And I find it funny. Uh, his friends, he goes, Hey, it's Scott and the guys. And I was like, Yes, I'm in the book. Um, anyway. Uh, he uh, Eddie tells his dad he'll be right back. And Eddie's dad says, Don't disappear. Um, meanwhile, Eddie talks to his friends and they ask him if he wants to go see Superman 2, uh, in the theater. And I thought that was kind of funny. Eddie says, yeah, my dad's, uh, once my dad gets involved in his, uh, carving, he's not even going to notice that I'm not here. So let's just take off. So Eddie takes off and, um, when he gets back to the house, to his house, his dad's freaking out. He said, I... I told you not to disappear. Where'd you go? You've been gone for two hours. And, um, Eddie was like, it's not a big deal. And, you know, um, I mean, whatever. And Eddie's dad says, don't you understand? I worry about you. Uh, Eddie says, look, being diabetic isn't that big of a deal anymore. It was when I was a kid. Um, I take my insulin shots and I'm good. So right there, it shows that, uh, it shows Eddie's dad giving him an insulin shot. Uh, and, uh, he's, Eddie's dad pretty much puts him to bed and, which is weird cause he's like, he's gotta be like 16, 17, whatever. Um, he said, get some sleep. He needs his help in the morning. Uh, they have a big commission for a mausoleum and, uh, Eddie's like, I need to make a clean break for my dad. I need to get out of here. So he starts climbing out the window and mentioning how his, his legs feel stiff. And maybe he's worse off than he thought he was. Maybe his dad was right. Um, and he says once again um, that he needs to make a clean break. And I do mean break is what he says. So he's walking out towards his dad's tool shed. Uh, his dad comes in sees that Eddie's not there. Um, he calls out to Eddie um, and turn the page. And Eddie's there smashing up the angel that his dad was just making uh eddie's dad says no stop don't do that you know and eddie's like you know what he's i'm just gonna break the crap out of this and he's gonna pay more attention to that what i smashed and try to fix it than run after me well eddie's dad says you know what have you done and he starts running after him and as uh eddie and his dad are running away eddie thinking to himself that uh you know, he, he has this pain in his legs and it's moving up his chest and uh, his arms are so heavy and he can't go much longer. So as they're running, Eddie's dad jumps and tackles him and uh, he explains to Eddie that he's like, I told you you were weak uh, and you're never as strong as your friends. I've been telling you that since you were a kid. Uh You'd never be able to stand on your own, but you were always looking to leave, to break away. I knew I couldn't keep you here for long. Uh, you have to stay here with me. You need my protection. So along with your insulin, I've been giving you injections of cement. Your flesh will harden, your limbs will be motionless, and you'll stand in the cemetery among my greatest works and remain by me always. And it ends there with Eddie being a statue in the cemetery. Uh, so that was, that was pretty crazy. Um... I liked that that one. I liked that one a lot. That was cool. And on to the next one. 
Okay, uh, so this last one was really very short and probably my least favorite of the three. Um, it's called The Serpent Tree. Um, written by Jack C. Harris and the artist was Nestor Redondo. Um, it had a kind of a neat idea for a story, but it, I feel like it was cut really short. Um, so we start off with this um, gypsy man, or they like to be called Romanies. Um, going into the Dillsdale Employment Agency, uh, where Mr. Dillsdale, um, does an interview with him, uh, right there, you can see it happening. Um, Mr. Dillsdale doesn't like gypsies, apparently, and he pretty, pretty much just blows them off, um, and tells his... His like secretary, I think her name is Jenny, uh, to not file the paperwork because it's no big deal, and uh, starts hitting on her, and she doesn't like it, and he calls her a gold digger, and she pretty much takes off. Now the funny thing about this story for me is, obviously you're not supposed to like Dillsdale, um, but throughout the story you start to not like Jenny either. Uh, because she is a gold digger. Um, she follows... Renando, I think is his name. I forget. Anyway, she follows him because Dillsdale tells her that they have money, they have gold stashed all over the place. So, she's a gold digger, for real, and she follows the gypsy um, to get his gold. And... Um, she follows him to where, to like the gypsy camp, and she meets, um, their, she meets, where is she, Alga, the gypsy queen, who tells her a story about the serpent tree that, uh, it was the tree in the Garden of Eden, and it knows when you lie and tell the truth and if you lie the gypsy tr the serpent tree will get you and not let you go until you tell the truth um so as Jenny and Renando are sitting there Dillsdale comes up and has a gun cuz he's filled with jealousy he followed Jenny um and he starts shooting at Rondon, Renando, and they come upon the tree, and she gets grabbed by the snake of the serpent tree. Um, and the only way for her to get loose of the serpent tree is for her to tell the truth um, before the snake bites her and kills her. You can see right, right there. Uh, so she finally tells the truth. She said she only came with him because of the gold, and she doesn't care about anyone. And that's the truth. Uh, then it lets her go. And Dillsdale is there. Uh, saying that Redondo left her. And just for him. And uh, she tells him about the tree. And he carves his name. In the tr he carves their initials in the tree. Um, and then it goes on to say that nobody noticed the gypsies leave. Also nobody noticed a small little wedding that happened. Um, in the justice of the peace. And nobody really noticed the honeymoon taking place. And it wasn't until midnight that the motel's manager and local police officer did notice something amiss. And it's screaming and Jenny being on the bed with a snake with the initials carved in the belly of the snake. Um, and Dillsdale was dead. Um, and then at the end, it says, Kane says, So remember, dear readers, if you meet a Romany, be truthful and not a snake in the grass. And it shows him there. So, um, there's really, I mean, it was all right. It just didn't do anything for me. Uh, the best part of it was actually at the bottom of the first couple pages, uh, where it's like, um, right here and then you flip the page and it's right there. I'll read it to you, uh, because I thought it was pretty neat. Um, it says, come closer, my dear, and listen to me. And you shall hear of the serpent tree. With roots in Eden and limbs in hell, the devil stands as its sentinel. Wherever the gypsy tree 
Wherever the gypsy makes his stand, the serpent tree does ere expand. And by bond and blood once is made, those untrue can never evade. Um, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, overall, that last story didn't really do it for me. But um, I did like this book. It was really, really good. Um, I really want to get the next issue to see what happens in, in the Eye Vampire story. Uh, so, um, that was my Halloween-themed back issue review of... House of Mystery 308, starring Eye Vampire. Um, yeah, it was really good. Hope you guys are enjoying these. Um, hope you have a great day, and I'll see you later. Bye.